Um, this is now like our, uh, uh, maybe my sixth or so virtual either art auction or art exhibition. And I have forgotten to record every single one of them. And so uh, thank you for the reminder, Patricia, that we now are going to have one that's actually recorded. Um, and so now the way we're going to start our program, the way it's going to work is if I could ask you guys just to kind of mute yourselves. Um, at any time, if you do kind of have a question or maybe we call on you for some reason, uh, definitely go ahead and unmute yourself and, and give us a shout. Uh, but what we'll do first is um, get to know Patricia a little bit. I'll, I'll interview her briefly. Uh, we're not doing a whole Monarch Society evening uh, back to the childhood situation. Uh, but I would like you to know a little bit about her history and how she learned about the program. Uh, following that, we're going to see how some of her work uh, through a PowerPoint, and she will be able to tell you her inspiration and technique, uh, and then how you can get involved. Um, and so, uh, Patricia, uh, are you ready? Sure, of course. Okay, uh, tell, tell our guest today, um, how did you find out about the Escapist program? <laughs> The spirits told me. No, I um, I have a best, best friend. Her name is Birgit Kumps, and she lives in Houston. She's a long time, in fact, generational friend. Her dad and my dad were friends. And um, she knows my history. She's been telling me for decades how talented I am. And she's a business guru. So she's like, you need business classes. And then she knows Lindsay. Um, so she actually um, alerted me that Lindsay was in this program and I thought, hey, this is interesting. And I paid attention and followed up with Lindsay as soon as I could. This was last year, I think. And she told me about the program and I just knew I needed to, to get in. <laughs> So. Uh, well, I am so, I'm a very, of course, grateful and excited that that connection happened. Um, being uh, overseas, uh, I'm cu uh, curious um, what you remember about the, the application process, uh, in particular the interview, because you don't show up here, you know, we, we speak with you via Skype. Uh, how did that go? It was, um, it was really easy. I, I found it uh, a very flowy, I, it was not really an issue. Um, I've, I've been, I've been applying for programs for years and years, so I'm kind of used to, to that kind of thing anyway. And I've been on doing Zoom calls for ages, um, but it was, it was fantastic to kind of get to know people, to see what was going on and, and to, to get involved in that way. So. Uh, well, I, I'm, we were thrilled to have you apply and we're always excited to um, you know, have the, uh, the world know about the art movement of escapism and what we're trying to accomplish with artists. Um, could you tell our guests a little bit, they, they have read your materials and, and know that you are primarily a photographer, uh, but uh, how, could you tell them a little bit about your training or how you got to where you are today? Sure. Um... I, I have been taking pictures since I was seven years old. It was all I wanted when I was a kid. So um, I got a camera, thankfully, and I've been taking pictures ever since. And uh, I wanted to get into art school. Uh, I was actually the school photographer. I didn't tell you that uh, before when I was a teenager. At 13, I was in the darkroom. So it's, a long, it's been a long stretch. Uh, I wanted to go to art school. Uh, sadly, my dad was old fashioned and he wanted me to be, to be a secretary or earn my own living didn't believe I would be able to do that as an artist. And um, so I fled to the other side of the world as soon as I could and went to art school anyway. <laughs> I paid my own way. Um, and then uh, did graphic design photography for, for decades as a freelancer. So I've always done my art. And um, I got to a point where I went back to art school to do digital photography in Amsterdam, which was really fun. And um, then I kind of fell asleep with it all. I was doing a lot of art, but I wanted, I wanted to get deeper into it. So I decided to go for, for my master's. Um, and it wasn't really for the piece of paper. I just really wanted to be full time at my art and see how far I could push it. So it was really, really exciting time. And that's what brought me to Scotland five years ago. And it's taken off since then. And you told me kind of after your, your master's program, I believe, is when you applied for a lot of residencies. Is that right? 
and, yes, and yeah. one of those residencies was the Arctic expedition. Um, yeah. Uh, tell tell our guests a little bit about that journey. Um, I was really really lucky. I I get very determined when there's something I want. So I, I did better than I thought I would with my masters. I I did my masters in fine art and humanities, got distinction and awards, and uh, won a lot of residencies, which was a thrilling time. But this was a big lifetime dream of mine to go to the Arctic and then to be on a tall ship sailing. Wow, I, I applied for this and I was full force uh, wanting to get onto this one. And it was an expedition. So um, I was lucky enough to be invited as one of the participants. So it was incredible. Yeah. Um, now, they've, they've read in your materials uh, most likely, but we'll, we'll kind of, I want to kind of go over it again. You know, your Arctic expedition, um, you were quite isolated, uh, was, was sort of a theme with that. And now, could you describe your situation um, during the uh, pandemic and, and the lockdown? Like, where, where are you in Scotland and what is it like where you're living? Right, that's two questions. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, um, I, I live uh, quite isolated. I am reasonably close to, to a town, um, but I live in a small village on a farm. And um, during the lockdown, um, we, it was very severe here. So we had um, a five mile radius. We were not allowed to leave unless we were going to the doctor or getting food, basically. Um, it was really, and they were out, they were, cops everywhere so it was very it was very isolated so I only saw one person who's my friend Susan on the farm who walks her dog um, uh, she just would call me and we go for dog walks so that was all where it really did so it was a very isolated time and you asked about the Arctic that was the link obviously for this project um, uh, it was an incredible experience and I did a lot of research about uh, the old explorers so I was really into that whole thing of uh, going, you know, going where no man had been before on a, on a wooden ship and kind of being prepared to, to give away your life, to die, basically, to, to find a new world. But it really, you really could feel that sense of survival. So we were on a wooden ship that was not actually an icebreaker. So if we got caught in a storm and got, got um, packed into the ice, there was literally a danger of our lives. We had to sign a lot of documents before going. Um, and uh, <laughs> we were we were on board. It was there were times I was up on on deck. Um, and it, I could get into that whole feeling of wow, this is severe. We're like 400 kilometers away from the North Pole. Um, it, we're back into survival mode. So that was kind of the, the feeling between the two. It's like, um, yeah. Well, uh, uh, many of our guests that are on our on our call today, they know what it's like to sign some documents when they come visit our art gallery these days. Because I, I'm, uh, I'm making uh, sign plenty of waivers when they come and visit. <laughs> uh, and I do want to say that you did at least see a few other guys during your uh, quarantine, at least weekly, that I know of. That was the highlight of my quarantine. <laughs> Um, I was very grateful and I was a bit pushy, I think, in the beginning when everything was, I was, let's just go ahead. <laughs> so, yeah, I spoke to uh, John and Ryan weekly and that was like the highlight of my week because I was really dedicating myself to my art. This is what I wanted to do. So it was, it was great. It was perfect. That's, that's yeah. very kind of you and, and the feeling is mutual. I, I want to let our guests know that Yes, um, very diligently and consistently, Patricia kept up her meetings, and that's why we're so excited to help her launch this project, which is really, really incredible. Uh, and thank you, Patricia, for that. Now let's look at some of your artwork, okay? Uh, I'm gonna pull up the PowerPoint. Okay. That's me in the Arctic. Cute. And here is your first piece. Uh, would you tell our guests a little bit about it? Yeah, this, um, this is from very early on in the pandemic. Um, I, I wrote in the piece, you've, re you've read it probably, that um, 
I, ha I was locked out of my studio. I had very little of my gear. So all I had was my camera, um, a backdrop, a tripod, <laughs> and uh, a few bits and end, bits and bobs. So I started to edit more of my um, Arctic pictures. I took, you don't want to know, almost 10,000 pictures, I think, in the month out there. So I'm still editing them today. Um, and then I just started having this brain wave that I wanted to start doing self-portraiture, which I've done before in my career. Uh, but it wasn't really about me. It was about me being the archetype for the coronavirus um, emotions. So this picture is really an emotional shot of me, um, my inner child, really. The, the, we go through all these phases. I, I, I think the people I speak with during the corona. So there's the fear. And then there's the confusion and then there's the, it's all going to be okay. And then there's, is it really? So all these emotional things. And this is really me um, in that fearful kind of inner child. Um, so I go out and I pose, uh, take self portraits of myself and then throw a lot of symbology in it's very simple, but I'm holding a teddy bear, um, which is floating away in the water. And then underwater there's um, an umbilical cord. So I've kind of come, come loose um from reality or from whatever it is uh, that i've come loose from and floating around in this stark uh symbolic landscape uh amazing so just to just to clarify so everybody because i had to ask about this so these are two whole like these are years apart these images this is from your arctic yes. expedition uh, yeah. And then you infused an image you took of yourself uh, during during the lockdown. Uh, is that's what's coming together in the image? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Let's uh, ready for the next one. Sure. See which one you picked. Oh my gosh! Yes, this is uh, <laughs> probably one of the more intense ones that people kind of have gasped at. Um, so this is me literally hugging the coronavirus. Um, and this is a phase where I started going into uh, all the, the information was coming out about how uh, nature was starting to, to um, heal. So the dolphins were floating around and uh, in the, that was at Venice, I think. And I, I thought, wow, there, there are good things to the coronavirus. Um, and what else can I say about this one? Technically speaking, again, this is a self-portrait. Um, I really wanted to embody that inner child again. And in order for it to look realistic, I need to hold on to something. So I actually filled a garbage bag with a pillow so that I can hug something, which is just a little thick, fun thing to know. But really, it's also that sense of all these things floating in the water. Are they the, the you know the corona bomb that could hit you and you could kill you at any moment in time? And definitely feeling that, but also wanting to embrace the situation. And you you had mentioned to me, I'll I'll take it a little bit personal that um, you know you you have not celebrated the the coronavirus. In fact, it's hit you quite personally, hasn't it? Yeah, I've had um, serious cases right in, from the very beginning. I had three people that were in my art gallery opening the first week of Corona here. I had my a gallery opening. Three people there had Corona. Uh, and I had two family members in um, uh, put into coma in the Netherlands. Um, and, I, and I lost two friends and one a second dad. So it's been a serious situation as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it's it's inspiring to see that you've been able to make um, uh, fine art pieces having gone through all of that. Uh, let's let's go ahead and look at your next one. Uh, oh, thank you, Susan. Um, this is yeah, they're all little bits and bobs. Um, reclaiming uh, my true north is a piece again, just just this is the inside information this rock is the last piece of land before the, the north pole behind this is sea and then 400 uh, kilometers further up is the actual north pole so i was this i was fascinated by this spot because the whale watchers had also stood here centuries ago um so i knew i wanted this in an artwork and um as i was groveling around the house trying to find symbolic p bits and pieces to bring into my artworks i found this old ship's compass that i picked up that was from an old tall ship so all these pieces started coming together 
Um, and this piece is about um, having the time during the coronavirus to let go of the doing and the doing and busyness and coming back to myself, um, kind of really reclaiming myself and what I want to be doing with my life and thinking about giving that kind of, um, yeah, more, more, what's the word, uh, putting energy into that. Um, and it's also, I also had some personal reasons for making this piece about that point in time in my life in the Arctic. Uh, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's one of my favorites. So uh, before, now we're going to actually see some projects with some uh, Houstonians. Uh, I'm excited to, to show our, our guest today. Uh, but actually, guys, I do want to let you all know, um, the, these pieces that, that Patricia has created are actually available um, as limited editions. Um, so yeah. if you uh, were interested in, in any of those, um, you can reach out to her and, and acquire them. Uh, Patricia, uh, uh, let me take it off the sharing for a second. Um, could yeah. you, did you have the example pieces? Can you, can you show oh, yeah. kind of just hold up the sizes uh, just so people know kind of what we're talking about? Okay, so what, that? yes. So, so that's so, the eight by 10. And um, this is this is in fact um, one of the acrylic pieces. So that's kind of the thickness of it. They're okay. be beautiful pieces, um, and that you can just hang them right on the wall. The ones that are made in Houston will have a slightly different hanging system, but they're similar to this. Cool. And so you I said have... so that was the eight by twelve. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yep. And this is the the twelve by eighteen. Twelve by eighteen. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So awesome. these are some of the artworks from the gallery, the gallery pieces that I had left over from the show. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate you having those as examples. Are those in metal? Um, there, you no. can have it done with a metallic. Um, I'm glad you asked that. Yeah. This is a third one and that's actually on aluminium. Okay. Yeah, so that's possible. They're a bit pricier, but it's about, I, I, we'll have to look at that, I think. It's not a big, big difference. We, we have some uh, aluminum, have a... aluminum printed uh, photographs. Yeah. yeah, I love them. I love them. It brings a really beautiful shine to the pictures. So I did see yeah. a question in the chat. So, so we talked about there being additions available. What did the originals sell? I'm sorry, with the did originals? The, did the originals of those sell? The last ones, the ones, these that I'm showing here, yeah, I sold a lot of pieces. Um, I'm not sure what you mean with the original though. No, I mean, normally, so something is available in an edition, but there's the there's like an original uh, piece. Is that uh, available or sold or? Uh, they, they are all there. Yeah, that's, um, even these artworks are called, I call these prints because they're, they're uh, editioned. So there's only a hundred of them. Um, okay. In the bigger pieces, I go down to a smaller amount. So the bigger they are, the smaller the additions are. Okay. Um, um, okay. But so if you're I'm asking gonna... about for the artworks that I'm doing for the project, they're one-off pieces for the right. clients. No, I think just yeah. I think our well, let, I'm going to move on. Uh, when like yes. for instance, when John does a painting, there's a painting original, and then he does addition. Like you can buy additions yeah. of that. So I guess it's just not really. Yeah not the similar no you just you release them in a certain number of editions that's right yeah okay yeah okay um let me now i'm really excited to show you guys um some works that she has been creating recently here we go everybody might recognize the subject here uh, Patricia, could you tell us a little bit about this one? Lovely, Lindsay. So um, these are the first ones um, working for the project, working with other people. I'm so excited about this. So um, Lindsay and I had our one-on-one -on -one talk, and uh, she told me about her experiences with the corona, uh, good and bad. Um, but one of the beautiful things that she said that really jumped out was, thank you, um, how she feels she's channeling these works and they really come come through her and out of her 
And immediately I saw this, this vision of this kind of beam of light, very spiritual, and then these artworks just flowing out of her hands. Um, and I looked at her images and I knew this was the one. And she, this is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger for her during this time, as she's been quite quiet, although she's been online, she's been really into her work. Uh, and then she said, but that she felt a little floaty. So she feels like she's kind of ungrounded and needs to be more down on earth. And I said, that's it, we're gonna use that because this is, it also had to do with her experiences. So I've tied her to this, uh, very lightly to this piece of ice. Um, she could snap free of it at any time. Um, but that's kind of the gist of it. It's got more depth to it we, for her because of the talk we had, but um, yeah. So I love this and I think all of our guests will probably recognize those colors are 100% Lindsay's uh, work. This is um, actually, it's actually one of her artworks. So I've actually yeah. taken the artwork out of the frame and turned it into these rainbows shooting into the sky. And yeah. you had told me, because this is actually kind of part of the commission process that our guests might be a little interested in. Um, you, you showed your, um, your work to Lindsay and she made a few suggestions. Could you um, tell our guests about that process? Yeah, there's, um, I'm very happy, you know, especially if it's uh, with these commission pieces. Um, she just wanted just tiny little things like she wanted to be lifted a little bit higher off the water um, and she wanted something specific with her painting to have it just slightly changed and that's not really an issue. I keep, I keep the images in layers so I can change things up. Um, it's part of the process is for it to be a collaboration so I actually love that. I love that people kind of think along with me and say we'd like just these little tiny changes, that's fine. Awesome. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to go to our next one, which folks will recognize this person too. Is she still here? <laughs> uh, I think so. Monique, are you still on? Yeah. I'm still here. Hey. hey. Well, then hey. Uh, with this one, maybe, Monique, can I start with you? Um, sure. Uh, what was it like uh, engaging in this process with Patricia? Um, it was really cool. Uh, when she first explained it to me, I kind of didn't really get it because I'm not that deep into photography. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, sure, let's, let's see what happens. <laughs> so I was excited to do it. Um, and then I explained to her, you know, how I was feeling about cr Corona. And uh, at first, you know, having my liberties restricted to a certain degree because of my previous careers, I was like, oh, so we can't go somewhere for a while? That's fine. Like I was, <laughs> I was already kind of used to that. But I, um, but I told her, but like at this point, you know, I did kind of like going two places before they closed things down that I felt caged. And so that's where the bars came in. And that was, that was pretty cool. It was her idea with the uh, torch to go ahead and say, you know, I'm freeing myself from this mindset that it has to be awful right now. That it's, just, it's a choice. Now, you have to be that key sometimes to unlock that ability within yourself to free your own mind. So it was her idea to add the torch and uh, those bars are actually the random bars that were on my house that I bought three years ago. <laughs> and I was, yeah, they were just still piled up in the garage. Cause like when we bought the house, I said, oh no, <laughs> these are coming off. And I'm glad I was able to use them again. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, thank you uh, uh, for sharing that. And I, the torch is my favorite part because to me, it's so much of you, how you create your art, which also sets you free as is, is exactly. artwork. Right. Um, let me ask you, Monique, another question. Um, what, was it easy to supply uh, Patricia images or what she was asking for? How did that process work? <laughs> um, it was really, it was really easy. She just said, as long as I had just took it up against like a solid background and I already had these random white sheets, you know, that I throw on floors or whatever when I paint. So I just threw some unused up on the wall, took the photos with my iPhone and uh, just sent them to her. It was really easy. Good, good, good. Well, thank you. I really appreciate you working with her on this project. It's incredible. Pr Patricia, uh, before we go to our next one, is there anything you wanted to add about this uh, collaboration with Monique? Um, I think just the fact that I, um, I'm having such fun looking at the backgrounds and, and finding all the symbolism in everything. So this, for me, she's 
Uh, she's sitting on the top of the mountain already. She's already there. The oh, sun's starting to shine around the corner and come and hit her. You know, she's ready to break free. It's just, it's right there. She just needs to, to flick the switch on there and burn it down. It's done. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. it. Okay. Um, now our guests will, will definitely recognize this <laughs> the subject in the next one. Um, uh, and I guess I, let me, I'll, I'll say a few things, Patricia, and then I wanted you to talk about how this, this came together. Um, everybody knows uh, John and, and our dog, Nancy. Um, this is actually from their first time. Um, you guys probably know Laura Parkin uh, is a good uh, collector of John's artwork, very supportive of the Art Launch program. She's one of our neighbors over here in the Heights and uh, she has a pool. And uh, Nancy, unlike Bobby, uh, does love the water. Uh, and so this was their first kind of trip to a, this was summer had already started and uh, John's first trip to kind of visit a friend and, and go to a nice pool. And so Nancy joined him in the water. Uh, and I, so I, I completely love this. John and Nancy are having the time of their lives. I'm sure you can tell. Uh, Patricia, how did, how, what was it like um, pulling this together for JP? So, um in his case and it, it might not always work but he actually sent me a video and i was able to distract this from a video and i just loved uh his story behind this this video uh being such a special moment in the corona finally kind of being free um and it's for me it's symbolic of no matter how cold it is uh, or how um desolate it is you can always find that freedom as well so um, I just loved it. I, I envisioned this and I found the picture and, and I just knew immediately that it, this is all it needed. It's really simple. So we're going to have, we're going to, um, in a minute, we're going to have some opportunities. I just want to let our guests know to be thinking about it if you, if you have any questions. Uh, one of my questions at this point is these, these three examples of the collaborative commissions you've shown us all have uh, individuals in them, and Lindsay and Monique and, and John. Uh, for this commission project, does it have to be you or a person or, or what all could it no, be? No, 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 no. I, I envision uh, it could be, uh, it can be a person, it could be someone you love, it could be family you can't see, uh, but it could be symbolic. It could be, um, I've had this vision actually of like putting, maybe putting Houston um, in the landscape or it could be a place, it could be, um, an object uh, it's something i think we'll uncover as we go but if someone's not wanting to have it as a self-portrait that's absolutely fine we'll find something else that's symbolic of their um experience or something that they'd like to have done yeah awesome. does that make sense yeah, yeah ab absolutely i'm going to just show our guests this this slide which was circulated to them um, guys, if you did want to get involved uh, in the project with P Patricia, she is certainly looking for early signups to give some the project of some legs as it gets kicked off. And um, I do want to say a special thank you to the Pollards who have, have signed up for a project with Patricia. Uh, up until the 14th, she's got a great deal on some early bird pricing. So um, you can you can email me or reach out to me or, or Patricia certainly directly. Um, if you guys uh, would love to, to, would like to get involved, and uh, I'd love to see that because I know she's going to create some very amazing pieces for everyone. Um, that that's kind of the end of our PowerPoint. I wanted to now just see um, what do you guys think, or, or what, do you have any questions for Patricia? Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh yeah, everybody, yeah, give it up for Patricia. Like. I, Patricia, I'm so impressed. Congratulations, that's wonderful. Gorgeous. Um, were there were there any questions uh, for Patricia? Must be. So the the pieces that you showed us in the very beginning of you with the um, artifact and the and all the the coronavirus and all of those those were they look they were in color, correct? So the, the ones that are for sale, the additions, are those also in color? They're exactly the same as that. Yeah, though you'll get exactly that. I love the yeah. coronavirus one, especially. Thank you. Yeah. It did. It helped our it helped our ecosystem so much, you know, by not going anywhere. And so 
Anyway, yes. beautiful work. Thank you. So uh, just in our, uh, I love that one too. I mean, I love all of them, but just in our practice today, because I've seen these uh, before, and then we did a Zoom, Patricia and I, we practiced our artist talk, but not all the art escapists know that we like to practice beforehand. Um, no, I saw things, I did not see all of those little um, things in the way back, like the coronavirus is coming out at all over the place, kind of, and underneath the water. And in the first one, I didn't see the umbilical cord until she pointed it out. Like it's, uh, there's a lot happening in these that I just think is incredible the more you look at them. Yeah, I want that, I really want them to be kind of memorable and epic. And um, I, f I feel like I'm just beginning. I feel there's a lot more still to do. So I'm really excited. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'd really like to capture lots of different stories and yeah. Well, I think um, we, we have another one of these chats on Friday. Uh, and John and I are going to continue to spread the word and, and hopefully get some more folks on board. Um, uh, this has been incredible, Patricia. We're so excited that you are with us in the program this year and that you finally get to have a little bit of face time, although virtually, uh, with some yeah. of us uh, here in Houston. It, it's very special and makes me really happy. And thank all yeah. of you guys. Thanks everybody for joining today. Again, if you want to get involved, you can reach out to me or Patricia. Uh, and I know even if you don't want to get involved, just if yeah. you have questions or just want to talk about it, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, agreed, <laughs> agreed, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And with that, I think we're gonna wrap. Uh, we're pretty good on time. Thank you all for joining. Okay. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So great to meet you all. This is what I've been missing. I just miss being there. So I'm really grateful you were all here tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys Talk soon. You soon. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Gurney. Bye.